I had the pleasure of getting uh, to know Nina and her family over the past uh, several months. Uh, she is a remarkable woman, uh, a loving and dedicated wife and daughter and mother and inspiration. And the fact that you're standing here strong is a testament to your unflinching uh, will to live and to thrive. And I look at Nicholas, who thankfully the Constitution will keep you away from my seat for a while, uh, till you get older, who is incredibly bright, um, a bright, warm, young man with an even brighter future ahead. And I think about uh, what you've had to deal with and overcome uh, to be with him and to guide him along his path to success and happiness. And as a parent myself, uh, and for all those parents out there, I think you can try to put yourself in Nina's shoes. Uh, think about what you would do for your children. Nina's journey to good health has been long, too long. It's had many ups and downs, twists and turns, unforeseen obstacles thrown in her way, many of which I would like to think should never have happened. Yet throughout, she has not wavered in her determination to beat the odds. She has displayed uncanny resourcefulness and refused to take no for an answer. Now, I know many of you have been following her story for some time. And so speaking of resourcefulness, how many do you know who would even think of posting an ad on Craigslist in hopes of finding a kidney? or have the media savage, uh, sav uh, savvy, I should say, to engage reporters such as yourselves to spread the word. Unfortunately, that transplant surgery Nina so desperately needed in December of 2015 was scrapped at the last minute. It just didn't work out. And with the clock ticking after struggling to find a donor through traditional organ registries, Nina could have curled up and silently suffered, but she did not. She refused to give up. Now, much has happened in the past year or so, and Nina's going to let you know about her, her uh, journey in a moment. Uh, but a reporter who had been following Nina's story first reached out to my office over the summer asking if there's anything we could do to help. Nina's kidneys were failing. Time was running out. But as I said, she never gave up on her search for a donor. She left no stone unturned and eventually found one, half a world away, a perfect match, her own mother Nana. But unlike Nina, Nana is not an American citizen. She is from Eastern Europe and lives in the Republic of Georgia. And if you come here from overseas, regardless of the reason, you have to go through our immigration system. She applied for a travel visa and was denied several times. So here's Nana, a loving mother in her own right, trying desperately to do whatever she can to save her daughter's life. She's willing to donate one of her kidneys. She gets tested and finds out she's a perfect match, but she can't get legally to the United States to have the surgery. All the while, the clock continues to tick and Nina's life hangs in the balance. I wrote to the American consulate in Georgia appealing to their better judgment and explaining the urgency and circumstances of this matter. This was life or death. And like Nina, I didn't take no for an answer. When the State Department failed to understand and extend this lifeline to Nina, I turned my sights instead to the Department of Homeland Security, where Nana could apply for what is called humanitarian parole. Now, humanitarian parole allows some discretion to allow certain individuals into the United States on a temporary basis for urgent humanitarian reasons, like for medical reasons. It's considered an extraordinary measure and not intended to circumvent normal immigration processes. For instance, the U.S. Center for Immigration Services receives approximately 1,200 such applications a year but the overwhelming majority, three out of every four, are denied. It's pretty selective. We contacted the officials at Homeland Security in support of Nana's application. We made it crystal clear that the life of an American citizen was at stake. Nana's trip to the United States was about saving Nina's life. And after our continued urging, the Department of Homeland Security finally approved Nana's humanitarian parole. The surgery took place last month, and as you can see, Nina's doing well and has a new lease on life. 
I have spent over 40 years in public service. I've crafted policy and passed comprehensive laws. Uh, those are all important. But this is what drives my work every day, helping real people, helping individuals like Nina, is at the very core of public service. It's a shame that Nina had to go through all of this, and I'm glad that we could just help. When it comes to life and death, it shouldn't have to be this hard. We need more compassion and less bureaucratic red tape. And we can't lose sight of the human component. We can't forget that there are real people and real lives behind the names and numbers on applications that come before our government agencies. If there's a viable and willing organ donor out there, we need to do everything we can to make sure Nina and others in the fight of their lives don't needlessly suffer. People need to be provided the best legal options available for their individual circumstances. For those who think it's too easy to get into this country, just look at Nina's story. Our immigration law can be complicated, can be challenging, they can be confusing. And that's why I'm here, not just to write and pass laws, but to help our citizens navigate the federal bureaucracy and to get answers. And so while I can't guarantee success in every case, I can assure you that we will do everything in our power to find a resolution. Constituent services is a cornerstone of my office's work. My staff and I try to help anyone, and I mean anyone, who reaches out for assistance. That could be an immigration case like this one. It could be a tax issue. It could be assuring veterans get the benefits they've earned, defending our freedoms. It runs the gamut. So please don't hesitate to call if you need assistance. That's what we're here for. Once again, I'm pleased to be here with Nina, her mom Nana, her husband Kay, her son Nicholas to deliver some great news and a happy ending to what has been an incredibly long and winding journey for Nina and her fight for survival. I was told that I needed transplant as soon as possible because my, uh, uh, my fistulas, uh, which was used for dialysis, it was failing. And um, to save my life, I needed a kidney. Um, it's very difficult to find kidney these days. I mean, <laughs> to find a kidney, somebody who would donate. Um, the only person I could call and ask for kidney, that was my mom. But the problem was she was very far away from me. Um, as Senator said, it's been pretty difficult to get her here. She was denied three times. Um, they were to she was told that we know it's an emergency, but we're sorry, we cannot let you go because we're scared that you're gonna stay there because you have a daughter, you have a grandson there. So final answer was no. That's when I contacted my wonderful mayor and um, I asked him for help. Um, he didn't only just offer help, he contacted everyone around, um, the other senators, congressmen also, and um, asked for help. Um, but the only person really stood by me and didn't give up on me was uh, Senator Menendez um, because everybody got tired at the end. They said, look, the American Embassy is not giving your mom a visa. We cannot do anything. Um, but Senator, Me Senator Menendez and, uh, as he mentioned, wonderful allies from Washington, um, they, have not be only, they have not only been helping me, but also she's been emailing me and calling me weekly to see how I was doing and uh, how was my um, health overall doing. So I'm very thankful for all the help I got from these wonderful people. Without them, it would be very difficult to bring my mom, impossible to bring my mom here. And I would still be on dialysis and I would not know how long life I would have ahead of me. Um, so I want to thank everyone being involved in this case. Um, I also want, sometimes they are surprised when I say that I'm very thankful for this disease uh, because this disease taught me a lot of things. I was a person who was worried about everything, uh, who was planning everything ahead like five, ten years, and uh, um, this disease taught me that I have to just take each day and uh, just be happy for every day. Um, and also, without this disease, I would not know how wonderful my mayor is, how wonderful Mr. Senator is and his team. And uh, it makes me happy to see that these people cared about my health. They cared and they wanted me to be alive for my family, for my son, Nicholas. I'm so glad my mom does not have dialysis anymore.
I'm so thankful for all the help my family got from these wonderful people. I want to thank my grandma for saving my mom. Now we can swim and have snowball fights. Mr. Senator, it is so cool to know you. You are awesome. These moments, like Nina and her families, are really is what the essence of public service is all about. For me, the reason that I uh, seek to be in public office is to change the course of events for the better. And sometimes that has a big picture to it. What laws can we do to create health care security, economic opportunity, educational opportunity? But when we can actually change the course of events in one of our citizens' lives, that we can save their life, that is the ultimate fulfillment uh, of public service and what this is all about.